I finished up the high voltage probe. This is how you align it. Currently I've got the meter hooked up to our high voltage pulser. And you can see it's putting out 100 volts. Okay, I've got two channels of the oscilloscope, one through the 10x probe and the other one through our 10,000x probe. Here both probes are attached to the output of the 100 volt supply. You can see both probes are set for 20 volts per division and they are both offset by minus 40 volts. So basically here's our DC mark, 20 volts per division or 100 volts. We'll set both probes for 100 volts per division. I've changed my DC reference point to the center. There's 200, 300 volts there. Slight difference in the gain. 400 volts. So it looks like our 10,000 X probe was just a little hot. Not by much. Needs to be trimmed out. And again, this is 100 volts per division. So this is after I've trimmed it. A little tied in parallel to the output of our supply. As we can see, the two channels track very nicely. That's 400 volts. Okay, I've got our output of our ARB connected to a T. One side of the T is just going to the input of our scope. And the other side is going to our 10,000x probe. You can see the red trace is set at 10 volts per division. And the yellow trace, or our 10,000x probe, is set to 20 volts per division. The ARB is currently set for a period of 5 seconds. You can see it's currently set for 1 second per division. As we can see here, the yellow trace with the 10,000x probe is roughly half the amplitude of the 1x. And we can see, obviously, at DC, the probe is fairly flat. This is the highest gain setting of the Wave Runner. So I can't uh, make these that are one-to-one. -one. So what we're interested in is the rising edge. And you can see here the probe is fairly well compensated. This is the low frequency compensator. You can see how I move the yellow one up and down. We want to try to get that as flat as possible. This is the higher frequency compensator. And again, we're just trying to tweak that in as flat as possible. And then this is for the very high frequency compensator. This is looking at 10 nanoseconds per division. And again, the pink is our 1 to 1 probe. And the yellow, our 10,000x probe. This is at 20 nanoseconds per division. And 50 nanoseconds per division. 100 nanoseconds. It does a fair job tracking it. You can see our Tektronix P6013 and the homemade probe are connected in parallel to a piece of coax. This is routed up to our ARB. You can see it's currently set for 10 megahertz at a square wave. This is a 10 volts peak to peak. The pink trace is the Tektronix probe. And the yellow is the homemade probe. So again, this is 10 megahertz, 9, 
two meg. Okay, so I've got the P6013 in parallel with our new 10,000X probe. I don't really have a good way to create a high frequency pulse. So I'm using our generator that we used for evaluating the multimeters. You can see they're both set at 5 kV per division. Set it to trigger at about 5,000 volts. Let's just see what we get. Again, our yellow here is our homemade probe, and our red is our Tektronix probe. As you can see, the two waveforms are pretty much identical. One of the things I thought I'd show you here before I put this thing away. This is just wax paper, so I'm using this to hold the wire in place, and again that runs down the length of the tube, and that's been trimmed to get the frequency response that I'm looking for. There's probably about uh, 10 wraps of uh, wax paper, and then I hit that with a heat gun to fuse that together. Then I lay the magnet wire over the top of that. There's no point on it, it actually has a hook, so there's no sharp edges. And then I went ahead, layered up another 10 or so layers of wax paper. And then I heat that again with a heat gun. And that seals this up. So that's what's forming the capacitor. Okay, one of the last things we have to do is make a handle for this thing. 